Ignatius knew that he had to become a priest, but he didn't have the educational qualification. In those days, Mass was held in Latin, but Ignatius didn't even know a bit of Latin. So for his first Latin lessons, big, rough Ignatius had to sit in a classroom with a bunch of 10-year-old students. Ha! Huh. Good morning, children. What is he doing? Isn't he our new Max teacher? I don't know. Now everybody sit down. Hello everyone. My name is Ignatius and I'm not your teacher. I'm a student just like all of you. Huh? Student? He must have gone mad. Ha 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 ha. I heard you boy. Don't worry. Like I said, I'm here to learn Latin my friends. Wow. Can you be my friend? Of course we can. Ha <laughs> ha. After this initial schooling in Barcelona, he moved to a Spanish university in Alcala and then Salamanca in the north. In both places, along with his studies, he engaged with people in conversation about spiritual matters. Hey you. Huh? Me? Yes you. What are you doing there? Uh, I was just talking to these people here. And what are you talking about? Uh, I, I. We were having a discussion about spiritual matters, sir. Why do you ask? Is there a problem? Yes, there is a problem. This man here was arrested twice before for engaging in theological conversations without having a degree. What? You don't have a degree in theology? Is it true? Yes, yes, sir. It's true. I don't have a degree in theology. But then how did you speak about the spirituality here? Where did you learn all that from? I learned that myself, sir. Now come with me. You'll be spending tonight in our prison. What a bright man he is. Ignatius was detained 3 times for interrogation. The charges were always the same, that he dared to speak about theological matters when he did not have a degree. He was always found innocent and released the next day. Ignatius then left Barcelona and attended the College Saint Barb of University of Paris. He was 38 then. It was here that he met the two most important people in his life. who would help him to build the order of jesuits while at the university of paris ignatius became friends with peter faber a young man from savoy south of france it's amazing that you have the will to learn even at this age the words that you speak they are so inspiring hmm i found my calling pretty late in my life <laughs> That must be Francis, my roommate. Hello Francis. Hello Peter. How are you today? I'm doing fine. I want you to meet my friend Ignatius of Loyola. It's a pleasure to meet you Francis. Likewise Ignatius. Peter had been spending much time with Ignatius and he was really inspired by him. He was impressed with the spiritual exercises that Ignatius taught him. I have to tell you something Francis. What is it my friend? I have decided to become a priest after my studies. Wow, that's amazing my friend. I am so happy for you. Ignatius was impressed with Francis and he tried to convince Francis as well. You should also consider becoming a priest my friend. From whatever Peter told me about you, You're indeed a spiritual person. <laughs> Thanks for the offer my friend, but I think I'm going to be a professor. I really like teaching and it pays me well too. Hmm. You know there's the saying, what shall it profit a man to if he gains the whole world but lose his own soul? Huh? We'll see again my friend. The question made Francis think for a while. 
He thought about it for many days. Francis had been living a noble life, so at first he could not understand the life of Ignatius, who was living in absolute poverty. Francis had learned about Ignatius's spiritual exercises, and he was very inspired. As days passed, Francis became more and more impressed with Ignatius. He had now started attending his classes as well. Ignatius, too, had seen the potential that lay hidden beneath Francis's worldly ambitions. So what do you say, Francis? Are you ready to join the order? Yes. You have completely won me over, my friend. I'm truly impressed with your works. Please allow me to join your order. Come with me, my friend. And this bond went a long way in finding the Society of Jesus. Many others joined the order too. There were these two young students from Spain, Diego Lainez and Alfonso Salmeron, who heard of Ignatius' fame and joined him. Then Nicolas Bobadillo, a successful teacher of philosophy, fell under Ignatius' sways. So did another scholar. Simon Rodriguez. These men were the saint's first disciples. I would gladly give up my life if there was an offer for immediate heaven. You shouldn't think that way, Linus. I would rather choose to stay on earth and work for the glory of God. If God sends you great sufferings, it is a sign that He will make you a great saint. If you wish Him to make you a great saint, then ask Him to send you great sufferings. While he did not place too many burdens on any, he wanted his followers to see God in all they did. He insisted on humility. Humility is the truth. Hate what the world seeks and seek what the world avoids. My dears, we need to get the approval of the Pope to start our mission. What shall we call our mission? What do you think of the name, Society of Jesus? That sounds excellent. That one is great. Now that we have drawn the rules of our order, I think it is time we get an approval from Pope. Ignatius, Francis, Pierre, and other members together founded the order, which went on to be known as the Society of Jesus, or more commonly known as the Jesuits. Together, these seven companions were united in spreading the gospel and devoting their life to the service of God. That day, they took the vows of chastity and poverty, and then made a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Under the direction of Ignatius, his disciples were soon ready for work. Francis, I want you to go to India. Go and set all a fire and a light. I will, Master. Francis went to India and converted many people to Christianity. He became quite popular among the local people and he traveled far and wide spreading the word of Jesus. Ignatius had sent his other disciple Faber to Germany. The German towns were hotbeds of Lutheranism, but Faber's inspired preaching soon began to make headway with the people. When the Council of Trent was called, Lyonnais and Salmeron were appointed theologians of the Pope. 
There is little record of miracles performed by St. Ignatius, but the achievements of his disciples are widely known. At the time of his death, there were 1,000 Jesuits, a good number of them involved in 35 schools Ignatius had started. He died on the morning of July 31, 1556, at the age of 64. St. Ignatius was canonized in 1622 by Pope Gregory XV. He was named the patron saint for spiritual exercises and retreats by Pope Pius XI. Wow! The works of the Jesuits are amazing! Yes, uncle. I really liked it. This is the prayer of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Let's pray this together. Dearest Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to labor and not to seek rest, to give of myself and not to ask for reward except the reward of knowing that I am doing your will.